And finally, new rule. The smartest thing Democrats did this year was finding their patriotism. Again, if you told me a year ago that if Kamala Harris would be the nominee and in her acceptance speech she would use the word privilege, I would not have guessed that she used it the way she did. Greatest <clears throat> privilege on earth. The privilege and pride of being an American. And Tim Walls also began his speech with a great line, saying, We are all here tonight for one beautiful, simple. We love this country. And yet this message doesn't seem to be catching on with a lot of the younger people. None of them are standing up and screaming that's my country. Quite the. Quite the reverse. Quite the reverse. The protests that started off as justice for Palestine have morphed a. Into a broader kind of America is the problem. We fucked up the whole world thing. Last weekend, there was a pro-Palestine rally in Seattle and when the rapper Macklemore said, fuck America, everybody loved it. Yeah, fuck America. Yeah. I'm sure it was a big hit with the queers for Gaza crowd, literally advocating for a government that would imprison you or kill you for being queer from the safety and security of a country that doesn't do that. Yes, America. The only place in the world where a white guy from the suburbs could become a millionaire. Rapper. Because here, every person, regardless of race, class, or gender, has the right to be talent-free. And guess what document allows you to protest and chant, hey, hey, ho, ho, followed by something really stupid. Yeah, Constitution Day was last week. It's an actual federal holiday, but no one noticed, despite the fact that it's probably the greatest legal document ever. Is it flawed? Of course. It was written by humans and they were all white men, as depicted in this illustration from Google Ull. But how about looking at the actual ideas in it? I won't hold my breath for that, because only 14% of 8th graders are proficient in history now and only 22% in civics, which may be why 4 in 10 Gen Zers say the authors of the Constitution are best described as villains. It's amazing, since in 1970, in 1776, James Monroe was 18, Alexander Hamilton was 21 and James Madison 25. Joe Biden was only 30. America's founders, they were the Gen Z of their day. And when they were your age, they started a country. What the fuck have you done? So, no, the Constitution isn't perfect because it wasn't written by Taylor Swift, but... And yes, the founders made excruciating compromises, obviously slavery. But slavery was a deal-breaker for the southern states. So there would have been two countries. And then to end slavery in North America, it would have involved invading a sovereign nation instead of having the moral high ground of keeping a union together. Would that have been better? History is complicated, and Gen. Z reasoning is not. They think they are pure, but they are really just simplistic. Like how in 1776, slavery was a lot like flying private. Today, if you could afford to, you would have done it, too. Everybody did it. Of all races throughout history, in the Bible and all over the world. If you hate George Washington for slavery, are you prepared to hate the woman king because her empire was built on it, too? And where do you imagine is this place, outside of your brilliant, pure minds, that's so much better than America? At least America self-corrects, a mechanism for which was actually written into the Constitution. The citizens of Gaza cannot assemble in protest of their own government, cannot do or say what they want or practice whatever religion they want, or have a free press. All rights guaranteed in just our First Amendment. The irony is in all this is that the world the founders birthed, flawed though it may be, provides the bedrock for everything that makes life good for the very people who hate them so much. It's so easy to take. Subscribe and click the bell icon for the more videos.